first saw an advertisement for a tour to an automated farm in China featuring drones, I just couldn't resist not signing up. If this intrigues you, keep watching. I promise you this will be a video that will be super eye-opening. So what happened is that I joined a day tour organized by the Hong Kong government. It required a small amount of fee, which is 200 Hong Kong dollars, that translates to around 25 US dollars for the whole tour experience. Before I continue, please note that I'm not a farming expert or a robotic expert. I'm just a participant sharing my insights, sharing my experience to you after a one-day trip. We first traveled to Guangzhou specifically to the Chengsun Railway Station, a city that's around an hour away from Hong Kong via China's high-speed railway. Our guide began with a very interesting fact, and that is China uses 9% of the world's arable land to feed roughly 20% of the global population, and approximately that's around 1.4 billion people which I did fact check with work fee and AI. With limited land, China's progress in agricultural technology, such as the two sites that I visit in this experience, make this achievement possible. Our first stop was the Tanhe Smart Agricultural Park, which is a part farm, part tech showcase. At the digital exhibition hall, we saw an early XAG drone, and it was 100,000 RMB, which translates to 14,000 US dollars. It waters and fertilizes, and it is able to cut a half-day job for two farmers into just 30 minutes. Then we moved to a greenhouse where tomatoes and cucumbers are grown. We were very fortunate that we could pick tomatoes from the greenhouse because I heard that this area was usually off limits for tourists. Speaking of tomatoes, here's an interesting fact. Tomatoes originated in South America and were later bred to be bigger. In Europe, in the past, Tomatoes were actually considered poisonous because of its beautiful wet skin. And it is only until the 17th century, people found out that it was edible and decided to consume tomatoes. There was a myth shared by a tour guide saying that there was a French artist who saw the beautiful appearance of tomatoes and felt that it was a pity that it could not be eaten. And with the conviction that he might die, he decided to eat that tomato only to find that it was juicy and tastes really good. Hence, we're all eating tomatoes today. Now back to the greenhouse, one of the really fascinating features of this is that it uses wind to regulate the temperature instead of spraying water. So with no insects present in the area, there was not pollination. So what happened is that they have fans in the venue to aid pollination, which I think is an efficient design to combat water wastage. Now afterwards, we left for lunch and visited XAG Super X Farm. So they demonstrated their latest model, which is the XAG P150. This drone flies at 80 km per hour, covering fields in seven minutes with one battery, or 14 minutes with two batteries, and costs approximately 50,000 RMB, which translates to about 7,000 US dollars. This shows how technological advancement has driven the prices down. Remember our previous unit was around 100,000 RMB and now it's 50,000 RMB, which is a 50% decrease in the cost as technology evolves. And in order to operate it, you do need a license and it could be controlled with a remote or a app on WeChat which make it really accessible to a lot of people in China. And unlike manual labor, a drone in helping with fertilizing and spraying water covers a vast amount of area in a short period of time. We also saw a demonstration of an autonomous driving vehicle, but used in an agricultural setting instead of the roads that you see nowadays. So we saw a plowing vehicle, which basically runs on a certain path and uses AI to navigate the car. But the really cool thing is that in the past, farmers might take a day or two just to plow through the fields in order to make the soil soft to you know, plant seed. But with this vehicle, farmers no longer have to remember where they have gone through in the field and just leave that to AI, which I think is super cool. Now, I was told that you could simply install a steering wheel and it could turn a traditional vehicle into an automated one. Next, we looked at the robotic water and soil management system. So in the past, farmers apply fertilizers at night because they have to keep running back and forth and nighttime is the coolest time to do it. But this affects the sleep. But now, all of this is done using a system. Automated valves and customized settings can ensure consistency and that system could set up scheduling through a mobile app or even just a console. After that, we went to an exhibition hall where we learned that XAG and DJI actually dominates the drone market. 
claiming around 90% of the global market share, with XAG focusing more on the agricultural use drones and also other robotic automations. Now, initially, convincing farmer was not an easy task. And when XAG started, the drones and equipment were actually very expensive. And many farmers were actually unfamiliar with the technology and unsure of the benefit. So to overcome this, XAG offered pilot programs, allowing farmers to test the equipment and see the efficiencies gained firsthand. Once results were clear, adoption grew. And subsidies also played a role, depending on the province. For example, in Guangdong, subsidies for agricultural tech could cover up to 30% of the cost, while in Hunan, they are tied to ecological goals like fertilizers reduction ranging from 100 to 150 women bee per mill, which is 1 over 15 hectare. And the reason why I know this is that I fact checked using Go Free. And these incentives combined with demonstrated value have driven uptake and usage of the product. Now, one of the things that I couldn't help myself but to ask the tour guide is about large language models and AI and also possibly DeepSeek. So I was asking them about AI agents in its application for autonomous farming. Now, they clarified that fully autonomous farming isn't still here yet. So integrating an advanced large language model like DeepSeek to create a self-managing farming agent is still something in the future. So human expertise and oversight is still so important and essential. Technology is a tool rather than a standalone solution. So after the tour, we returned via high-speed railway with dinner provided. Now, one of the biggest takeaways that I have is how China is promoting entrepreneurship by growing a group called New Farmers. Xin Nong Ren, China, encouraged highly educated young people to return to rural areas and use technology like automation, drones, apps, and smart systems to start farms powered by Agricultural 4.0. Now, these new farmers can obtain license to operate advanced equipment and even rent out the services like drone spraying to assist older farmers, which I think is super meaningful because the older you get, the less output and productivity you have. But now, this policy is actually connecting young people with old farmers and everyone is using this new technology accessible by the mobile phone. Yeah, I just think that this is a very beautiful picture. And this is interesting because it is a part of a national strategy to modernize agriculture and revitalize rural economies. Now, for me, this long-term vision was truly eye-opening, allowing me to really appreciate how innovation and technology can be harnessed for good. I'm not sure if you know, but over 340 million worldwide face acute food insecurity, which is worsened by conflicts and climate disasters like droughts and floods. And that's why innovations like our cultural 4.0 are so crucial to the world that we live in, not just in China, but also globally. But what is Agricultural 4.0? Now, Agricultural 4.0 is a system where AI and robotics revolutionize farming. And throughout this video, we saw some of these elements like Internet of Things, like we have sensors tracking the soil, the weather, and also the crops condition in real time. We have artificial intelligence to analyze data for optimal planting and pest control. And we also saw robotics and automation, how drones and trackers handled planting, harvesting, spraying, or hands-free. And also we have big data, satellites, and sensors to guide every decision to maximize that output. And sometimes there will be use of blockchain to make sure that food are being chased from field to fork, and also vertical farming and smart greenhouses that we saw, which cultivate crops indoors with precision. So with Agriculture 4.0, we can tackle climate change, population growth, and resource scarcity in a sustainable way. Now before I end, and if you see my previous content, you will know that I do not sugarcoat my opinions. Now, observing how China can feed 20% of the world's population with just 9% of arable land without causing inflation for citizens' basic necessity is a monumental challenge. However, the country's innovative approach and its policies is able to enhance farming efficiently and improve citizens' lives truly deserve commendation. Now, to be honest, these two venues are primarily a demonstration site. Now, I do hope to someday witness an actual farm spanning miles, utilizing drones and autonomous vehicles for farming. 
I'm also curious how other countries implement agriculture 4.0 outside of China. I hope that this video was eye-opening as I've said in the beginning and this sharing on agriculture 4.0 was insightful. So do please share your thoughts in the comments and if you like what you see continue to support me by liking, subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.